Okay, man, so salute, welcome back, man. This is part two, the Earl Spence does the heavy lifting. If you haven't watched part one, go back and watch that now so you know what the f I'm talking about when I say, okay, man, I was listening to a Joe Rogan podcast segment and he was saying they discovered this island where these lions exist that's way bigger than your average normal lion because of their food supply. The only thing they have to eat over there is like these bison or these big ass water buffalo. That's huge. So through evolution and adaptation, these lions then got doubled in size. Like the female lion over there is the same size as a male lion in a regular habitat. And that's what I'm saying with Errol Spence and Terrence Bud Crawford. Errol Spence been eating better. He's been eating better prey. He's a bigger, stronger lion than the average lion. Terrence Bud Crawford, I wouldn't call him a hyena. The real Marlowe called him a hyena, picking off the scraps and remains of the lion's share when he fought Sean Porter and Kell Brook. I'm not gonna call him a hyena. I'm gonna say he a smaller lion, like Scar. I know everybody know been seen Lion King, right? Scar was the beta. He was the smaller lion. Mufasa was the larger lion. When they fought for who was gonna be the alpha, that's how he got his scar on his face. And the hyenas around Bud being Scar would be Timothy Bradley and Sean Porter. You know what I'm saying? Now, when I look at the predator the, the predator prey and look at the prey that terence bud crawford feasted off of like hank lundy the hammer hammer and hank lundy he just did a little interview where he said he thinks errol spence is going to be able to beat terence bud crawford by knockout because of his strength his size his pressure tactics He's gonna do the same thing I was able to do and have success when I fought Terrence Bud Crawford in the first round. Hank Lundy said I was just too small. He was just naturally the bigger man. And he do got boxing skills. So I went back and watched that fight again. And I noticed in the first round, Hank Lundy was landing clean punches on Terrence Bud Crawford. And I was thinking to myself, if Hank Lundy had like Gervonta Tank Davis power, Terrence Bud Crawford would have been asleep the way he was open to Hank Lundy landing clean punches. Now, Terrence Bud Crawford made the adjustments. Uh, he went through that little storm. He weathered the storm. He just was better, bigger, stronger, and he ended up knocking out Hank Lundy in like the fifth round. But the first couple of rounds, Hank Lundy was a live dog in the fight. I'm looking at that fight and I'm saying, if Hank Lundy was fighting Errol Spence, I don't see him getting off on him like that in the first round at all. I see him lasting two rounds with Errol Spence. Victor Postal, another predator prey, another prey of uh, Terrence Bud Crawford, who got devoured by Terrence Bud Crawford. I just watched that fight thanks to Spill Dog. Spill Dog kind of was like, man, I just watched that fight. And, uh, you know, Victor Postal, man, he. he Terrence Bud Crawford, man, he fought most of that fight on the back foot, man. I mean, come on, you gotta do better than that, man. Uh, you ain't really start, you know what I'm saying, doing that until the 12th round, you know what I'm saying? That's Spill Dog. Go check out Spill Dog, subscribe. Go check out Real Molo, subscribe. And I'm like, let me go watch this Victor Postal fight. It's been a while. First of all, Victor Postal had the worst foot placement, foot movement, no, no. He had the weakest footwork I ever seen against Bud Crawford, minus maybe Jose Benavidez. And then he had this old European style, hop, 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 hop. Jab really wasn't there. No front foot dominance. He would step inside and give Terrence Bud Crawford front foot dominance. And then if he couldn't, he set no traps. He just allowed him to spin out and get off on him. It was ridiculous. Terrence Bud Crawford made easy work of Victor Postal, in my opinion. Hurt him a couple of times, knocked him down, just outboxed him, outclassed him. But he went 12 rounds. And I'm looking at Victor Postal style saying, if he was fighting Errol Spence, the fuck out of here, man. It would have been 
way worse than the rendition and the performance that Errol Spence put on that Chris Van Herden South Park kid who had way better foot movement than Victor Postal. That's just my thoughts, right? So, I'm looking at it and I'm saying, what people going to think, but fans, what, what is they going to think when they just think Errol Spence is this head down, come forward, pressure fighter with the jab and a basic one-two? What is they going to be thinking the moment that fight start and you see Terrence Bud Crawford outside of that range, finding his rhythm, setting up a trap, going for a counter punch, and Errol Spence just throw that jab out there, hop back, and as soon as he, you know what I'm saying, pops back right out of range of that punch, and then transitions that weight right back into a heavy body shot, and then right back out of range. What they gonna be thinking when Terrence Bud Crawford tries to use that sniping, sharp shooting type of, I'm gonna catch you coming in with a real quick, clean, precision shot, and when he throws that punch, Errol Spence just uses that punch to to have the momentum go right back into a two-piece counter punch every time you hit me once. Bam, bam, I'm gonna hit you with two thudding punches. And then what people gonna be thinking when Terrence Bud Crawford is outside trying to find that rhythm and set traps. And then instead of Errol Spence just jumping in there and throwing body shots, he's just hitting them with that triple jab and breaking up the rhythm. When they think Errol Spence is just gonna fight this way and he fight a totally different way than what they think, I just wonder what they gonna be thinking when they see the shit happening, when they watching Terrence Bud Crawford get broke down. And they gonna be waiting for that moment that he had against Sean Porter where somebody gonna be telling him, you down on the scorecards. And then Terrence Bud Crawford just gonna click into this kill mode and go in there and just catch Errol Spence and hit him with a one-two and send him into the ropes like he did Kell Brook. And when that shit don't happen, and the, the damn, I understand, I've been there, I see, I know how I feel. I felt the same way when I watched Tyson get beat by Lennox Lewis. Kind of felt the same way a little bit when um, Deontay Wilder was getting destroyed at that second fight against Tyson Fury. You're gonna watch somebody that you had a different you gonna watch you gonna see your man get crushed eh. but whatever man i don't want this video to be too long like they saying this heavy lifting and shit like this and contract negotiations and i just watched blood blue blood sports and he was talking about you know terrence Bud crawford did a video a long time ago he was talking about i believe in my skills i don't care if this shit is 50 50 because i ain't got nothing to lose and i know i can win and errol spence wants to go the easy route because he doesn't believe in his skills and he wants to just at least be the a side to make all the money he can just in case he lose mm. it's funny how the tables look like they have completely turned you know, 180 but it is what it is i can't wait to see this fight go down um terrence Bud crawford is a hell of a fighter pound for pound number one but He's a small lion. He's a scar. And Errol Spence is more like Mufasa. And if he ain't Mufasa, he like Simba when Simba came back after Simba had to go and do uh, Kuna Matanas and shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's some other stuff I wanted to say, but I really can't think of it right now, man. Um, in regards to to the 50-50 and... and um, I got sidetracked. And in the competition they fought, Sean Porter and Kel Brooks and Victor Postles and Lamont Petersons, all that shit may be down the road, more videos, I go into it. But I did want to finish that. Errol Spence does the hippie lifting and he got the three belts. Um, when I look at this competition, I look at your Danis Ugas and Sean Porter and Danny Garcia and Mikey Garcia and Kel Brook and Lamont Peterson and so on and so forth, Chris Van Herding and Compo and all that. And I look at what Terrence Bud Crawford brings to the welterweight division with Aguitas Kavalaskis and Jose Benef. Imagine what Amir Khan and Errol Spence would have looked like. Man, crazy. It's just crazy to me how people think. The more and more I hear Bud fans talk, the more they sound like they really 
only giving Terrence Bud Crawford a puncher's chance. But that's my thoughts. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment below. Boxing Nocturnal Thoughts. Salute. Bow.